Your Story with Melinda Estabrooks, an exclusive presentation of Faith Strong Today. Well, welcome to another show on Your Story with Melinda, and this is going to be such a fun and entertaining, but I also know inspiring show. My guest today in studio, Holly Sackett Reed. And I will say this a new friend of mine, but one I feel like I've known for, I don't know, 15, 20 years, but she looks like she's, I don't know, 16? You're too kind. You're too kind. Let me tell you a little bit about Holly. <laughs> if you don't know her already, and if you don't, I don't know why you don't know her. Holly Sackett Reed has been in broadcast and in Canadian Christian radio and music industry for 15 years. She is the founder and president of 1016 Entertainment. And listen to this. This is a great organization. Uh, It's a company committed to the education and promotion of artists pursuing exposure in the Canadian Christian music industry. She is also the founder and president of WIM Canada. It's Christian Women in Music and Media, and uh, she does so much. She's also on air at Shine FM in Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada, and so she is one busy woman. She has two babies, Mm -hmm. and that keeps her super busy, and I'm so glad she took the time out to be here in the studio with me. So Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's just nice to be away from the kids for a minute. (laughs) Kids, when you hear this podcast and show, (laughs) just strike that from the entire interview. Mama did not say that. (laughs) I love you so much. (laughs) All right, well, let's start with you. I mean, you're all about broadcast and media, um, really empowering Christian women, in the music industry and media. Um, Let's go back to your own story, because somehow Mm. that passion has had to come from somewhere along your journey. So let's start with you. Where did you grow up, um, your background, and how did you get to this place now, Holly? Sure, it's kind of a a long story, but... It's okay with lots of time. The short of it is, (laughs) uh, I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, uh, for people listening internationally, that's in Canada, Um, and it was just a really lovely start to life. My mom was a single parent, so it was just me and her, and Mm -hmm. so we would do all sorts of things together, and I just remember those days very fondly, and I just remember, too, my grandmother had a huge part in my life, and just having those strong women around me from day one, I just Mm -hmm. had so much respect, and now having two little ones of my own, oh, (laughs) I don't know how my mom and my grandma (laughs) did it being single parents, because that was, it's a lot, but... Um, Just seeing their strength and their commitment to their relationship with God um, was just very inspiring growing up. Uh, And then my mom got married, and that was an interesting journey of my Mm -hmm. life, too. And through that, I really felt passionate about supporting women. Um, I just saw a lot of things in the church where I thought, why aren't they helping my mom out more? Or why is it that he's right and she's wrong? Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's two sides to every story, and yeah. then there's the truth. Yeah, Like, absolutely. right in the middle, yeah. right? And yeah. so I just, it just, it made me just really question, why isn't she being supported? And, and why is it this very patriarchal society that we are in? Mm-hmm. And that was for me being in junior high. And that's with, like, raging hormones, <laughs> yeah. and you're, like, trying to you're figure like, out. yes, no, yeah. I hate you, I love you. Yeah, like, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I went through all kinds of just different emotions and, and feelings and you know, I went to a private Christian school, which was a huge blessing, just knowing that they were praying for me in hindsight. At the time, wow. though, they've got the rules, and mm-hmm. you don't like the rules, and they've got their way of doing things, and it was a traditional school, but um, looking back, that was an integral part of me becoming who I am. Uh, when I could have been treated with um, discipline or just kind of dealing with the negative emotions that I was mm-hmm. exhibiting from what I was going through, they, they were still stern because you, you still got to learn, but they did it in love. And that's something that a lot mm, of beautiful. educators don't always do. Mm-hmm. It's just dealing with the subject. They've got lots of students they're dealing with. So I feel very fortunate about that and, and appreciate their prayers. And walking through that time um, for my faith in Jesus, it just, it wasn't just something that they were teaching us at school that we had to do. And so, yeah, I had a lot of questions, but it really created the foundation for what I believe today. And, you know, somebody could say, well, God's not real or whatever the Mm -hmm. case may be, but I can look back and see moments where he 
I'm going to use Christianese. Yeah. He guarded my heart. And he did. It's good. Yeah. You know, he, he walked with me and he protected me in some very um, emotionally scary situations. And so. Now, Holly, did you feel that, I mean, as a woman, because, as, you know, there's there's listeners here and, and viewers that, you know, are still questioning about, you know, the God thing and, mm. and following Jesus. And yeah. what would you say was the most attractive thing about you know, Jesus, I guess it's, you know, for a really practical way, you know, he did guard your heart, but were you always open to him? I mean, even though through the questions and even possibly doubts, what was it about this relationship with him that was like, yeah, I, I'm sticking, I'm sticking with him. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to follow him mm -hmm. even through some of the tumultuous angsty times as a young person. And, you know, and through my teens, I think it really was that he was the only male that I felt safe with. Oh, wow. That's powerful. Yeah. So I didn't really trust men. I um, had a hard time accepting what they were saying as being true. God really did put the perfect women in my life to raise me. They would say, hey, what qualities do you like in this man or in this man? And, and how does that, you know, reflect in, in God and his character? So, I mean, without those like little promptings and those going through those situations, I could completely be different, like night and day. Yeah. Um, and so that was just a very key part in my life was just that I, you know, I knew that God was there and he was going to protect me and I didn't always feel him close. I, you know, I quite often would feel scared or like I was alone, but I still knew that he was there. Yeah. And in hindsight, when I look back at certain situations, I'm like, oh, okay. It's like the whole footprints yeah. poem, you know. <laughs> Why weren't you there? Yeah, yeah. I was carrying you, there, right? Carrying you, I yeah. Know. You know, that's really good because I think, I mean, that's a powerful thing. I got actually chills when you said that. Uh, you know, the only man that could, I really could trust. And I think that's part of and even my own personal experience that, you know, when people go, honestly, Melinda, like, why Jesus? I mean, mm -hmm. there's all these other, you know, people or religions that you go to. And I said, but, you know, you've got to – you've got to be in it to really know it. Like, yeah. he has been with me. I, I feel him. Sometimes I don't. I, I hear him speak to me. And there is something about him and his person and character that's beautiful that mm -hmm. no one else obviously, like, has. And I think that's part of, even for me, honestly, that's why I have been so with him. And I say that, people are like, but that, I said, because it's relational. It's not yes. like a separate entity of, of religiosity, but it's actually a relationship. And, you know, there are people that, you know, aren't followers or Christians, and they're like, I don't get it. I said, yeah, but you understand relationship. So it really is a real relationship with him. So yeah. that's really powerful. I think it's a good point for people who are like, I don't really get it, and I, I don't get the whole Christian thing, um, because I think they've said it's religion mm -hmm. and church, and it's not the relationship that you have with him, right? Yeah. So I think that's powerful what you said. Mm, and chills. <laughs> so you go through, um, you know, your life. You've got strong women around you. Mm -hmm. um, when is it where you decide, okay, in in my life here, it's going to be media and broadcast, and with a, with a strong focus on empowering women. Where did that kind of connect with you on your journey? Yeah, it it was a journey because yeah. initially I wanted to go into law. I oh. wanted to go into family court, <laughs> and just help families going through those difficult times mm -hmm. that I had experienced. And then I just thought, I don't think my heart can handle that. Yeah, There's a, a lot of really sad situations that need prayer. And my neighbor happened to work in Christian radio. And so I thought, well, you know, we have to do these career investigation things for school. I'll just go with my neighbor. It's easy, right? Yeah. And I got there, and we did his morning show. And uh, I was like, that's it? <laughs> And you get paid for this? Yeah, so easy. So wait, wait. <laughs> I can talk and listen to music <laughs> and get paid? Yeah, okay. Ding, 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 ding. Right? This sounds interesting. Yeah. I, I could be on board for this. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, thousands of people are listening to us going, oh, they're on to something. And now they're going to be like, everybody wants to do radio. I mean, it's <laughs> terrible. It's the so, hours, yeah, oh, it's horrible. It's so early. Yeah, early and hard. And, you know, your voice gets tired. Yeah, and, right? Oh, it's really tough. Do not get into it. <laughs> it's difficult. So, But, I mean, there it is, as you learn the, the is, nuances yes. of it. Right. But 
Um, that was my first introduction to it. And I thought, well, this could be fun. And mm-hmm. then just again, single parent situation again at this point. I had to fund my way through school. So to go to university, even though I would love to have a degree in something, mm-hmm. um, finance at that point, you know, my McDonald's salary <laughs> just didn't, <laughs> didn't pay the bills and loans are, you know, yeah. it's something I didn't really want to do. I did do, but um, to get one for a degree in, in law was, that's a long haul. So. Yeah. Um, so I ended up just taking a year off uh, school and just kind of applying for different things. But Nate, uh, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, and it's a really difficult course to get into. They took 12 um, students for the radio broadcasting course, and I got in first try. So Good for, for you. me, I thought my my grades were barely competitive. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Um, other people in my class had to redo courses. I'm like, oh, me too. <laughs> They're like, what? You only got an 80? Mm, yeah. Yeah, clo- close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just took that as mm-hmm. God saying, all right, you need to go down this path. So, and I just really enjoyed just broadcasting mm-hmm. and, and what it brings to the table. And when you kind of look at the day to day and and what influences uh, you know our kids ourselves the most is the entertainment industry, and so while I'm in school, I'm learning how to do radio well, and I love that. Um, but to live for the ratings or the books didn't really get me going. Like I just it wasn't for me. I, I there's so much more to life, and if you could be in an industry where you can impact people in a very tangible way in our day to day life, that's when I thought you know what Christian radio that is. That's for me. Tell me about that. For Christian radio, what's been, you know, because some people are like, really radio versus television or broadcast mm-hmm. TV. Your thoughts about, like, the power of radio, really. I mean, we're, we're both on it. Yeah. You know, but and, you know, I have some of my own thoughts. But I'd love to hear yours, you know, as we're learning together. What What is the power of radio? Why, why is radio so impactful? Do you think, I mean, really, is it impactful for millennials? Is it, was it, because some people think, oh, it's an old sort of boomer, Mm -hmm. older generation, you know, medium. Why radio? What would you say? Well, at that point, there wasn't really podcasts, okay? There was no (laughs) podcasts. Yeah. Um, And so it was, honestly, I didn't have to do my hair. You don't have to get all done up, really. No, you, know, you can you just come as you are. Yeah. No, let's make it spiritually. Yeah, it like is. you do to God, God right? God, just, just come, come as, as you are. are. That's okay, number one in radio, you just come as you are. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, for me, that was that was actually part of the draw was I didn't have to worry about what I look like because mm. um, we all, I think, as women, struggle with you know certain things. Yeah. Um, and so there was that, but radio is um, it's right away. You know, you turn on the dial and you turn on your on button and you're broadcasting immediately. There is not the, the extra stuff going on. There's not the lights, the camera. It's just it's raw. Um, you make a mistake and everyone hears it. And that's it. Like literally one button can make your show perfect or not. <laughs> and if something's happening, let's say there's a fire somewhere and people need to know, you don't have to make this big breaking news and then you're like trying to run all these little things mm-hmm. that TV has to do. You just turn on the mic and say, hey, be careful, this is happening. So it's a little bit more familiar. It's a little bit more casual. Mm -hmm. And I really like that about it was the immediacy and how it was right there and it's all in cars. It's terrestrial. It's it's something that even if, you know, millennials are listening to their satellite radio or if they're listening to podcasts or whatever, all of that could collapse. And I guess, you know, a, a transmission tower could collapse too, but there's CB radios. Like it's... In my opinion, one of the truer forms of broadcasting, the way to get the word out, is because it's, it's the simplest. Yeah, that's great. Oh, we love radio. Yes. And we love podcasts. <laughs> and we love all the people that listen and watch. No, that's really, that's a really terrific, like, sort of summation of that. I think that's the first time I've really heard it that way. And, and we're also seeing that this resurgence, too, of people coming mm-hmm. back on radio and on podcasts. Because now, not only in your car, but you can listen to it online. Like, there's so many avenues yes. of accessing the content, which is fantastic. So you're doing this. I, I see that you've, you've got this heart for radio, broadcast. You know, it's sort of this, you know, the news or content can be out there mm-hmm. pretty quickly. So why, again... I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious in a way of your strong women around you. But, you know, you, 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 you know, get together... Um, for you, you know, 1016 Entertainment, president of WIM. I mean, look at you, two organizations that you founded and are president of. Did you just, 
Did your eyes just go? <laughs> I'm like, you just went like this as I said. I'm like, like okay, look at this. <laughs> okay, I wasn't going to say overachieving, but I was about to say, wow, yeah. you are one busy woman. You know, you, you're the founder of and president of like two organizations. So let's start with the 1016 Entertainment. Mm-hmm. What? Why? Why did you ha- feel that you had to, you know, you know, f- sort of find this organization, put this together in Canada? Was there nothing there? What What was the reason for that? Well, there really wasn't there. And that's why I think I have so many things going on is because mm-hmm. uh, in our Canadian industry for the Christian side of things, there was just a, a lot of holes that I noticed and no one was doing it. So I thought, well, why not me? And there are so many amazing, talented Canadian Christian artists. And it seems like every generation was reinventing the wheel because they didn't know where to go to learn about anything, really. Mm-hmm. Like, I've talked to all different kinds of artists. And I'm like, okay, so I went to the studio and I recorded an album. And now what? And I'm like, that's just the start. Mm-hmm. You should really be budgeting, like, double what you put into just creating your, your music. Because you can have this amazing product... Uh, there you go. It sounds like all. <laughs> but, I mean, music. Um, but unless it's getting out to the people, it's kind of a moot point. So you need to be able to find ways to reach your audience and to be able to share with them what God has given you to record. The recording is just one element of it. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of I hit a, a wall in radio at one point, and I just was actually interviewing somebody and I got really curious about why were they in the studio? Why, like, how did their journey end up to be there with me talking with them about their music? And so I took a year, or actually four years off from uh, being at Shine FM and went to Harris Institute for the Arts in Toronto just to learn about how mainstream was approaching the music industry. Because Truthfully, they're, they're doing it right. Mm-hmm. They're selling CDs. They're filling out studios. And they are selling out to crowds and stadiums. And I see a lot of Christian artists who are struggling. And I really feel like we're called to be excellent in all that we do. And that means understanding what it is that you're doing. That means learning about radio and how does radio work and how do they reach their audience because they're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. They're, you know getting all the points, they're getting all the listeners. And what is it that they're doing that's drawing people in when it's us as Christian broadcasters or as artists who have the messages that give so much more eternally and yet our numbers are so much smaller. So so what's happening? Mm-hmm. So I really wanted to learn about the industry and, and how they were doing it and then be able to encourage artists that, okay, here's different things that you can be doing to be able to do your business well so that your ministry can grow well. That's great. So you're, you're seeing a need mm-hmm. and filling it. Yeah. Okay. So that's terrific. So that's one part of your life is this 1016 entertainment. Yes. Okay. Then <laughs> we have another part of your life. Yes. That is a president of WIM and that's Christian Women in Music and Media. And again, why did you feel that you had to, you know, create this organization? And again, it sounds like there might be a hole, but talk to me about that because that's mm-hmm. that's a big one as well that you're getting, you know, different women on board and and um, putting together like gatherings and little conferences too across yeah. Canada. So why did you feel that was something that you had to create and come up with in Canada? Kind of came out of 1016 a okay. little bit, going yeah. to the different conferences, seeing a lot of. Um, males leading workshops and a lot of males performing. And I have nothing against men. Please don't get me wrong. There's some amazing men who are doing such amazing work for God. But I also know there's amazing women, and I just wasn't seeing them get the same kind of platform. And it just made me question, where are the women? What's happening? Then I'd hear stories of, oh, I used to be a singer-songwriter, but, you know, it's difficult, and I didn't feel like I had a lot of support. So, you know, now I'm kind of going this way. Or I had children, and it was very difficult Mm -hmm. juggling everything. So, you know, maybe I'll take some time off. Or I'd hear stories of them saying that they just quit, but now they feel like there's something that's missing. Mm -hmm. Like they're not living out the passion that God put in their life. Now there are some that are completely content and loving their new journey, but there's still those that really want to continue to do what they're doing, but just didn't have the support. And so it just kind of bothered me, really. I'm like, where are the ladies? And (laughs) I want to have community with women as well as men who are all in this together. Mm -hmm. And so I just started talking with some of the ladies in my industry and who are my friends. And we just thought, why don't we just create something? And 
try to have a bit more of a community, you know, to be able to connect women, to be able to uh, create a place where they can be refreshed, inspired, and then, of course, keep learning. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we be the best at what we do so that we can shine above, not just because of Christ in us, but because we're doing our job well. That's awesome. So, yeah. Holly, I love what you do. I love you, but I, I just <laughs> love that you're finding places where no one's doing anything, where you see this need, and you're going after it and creating it and bringing people together in community. How does somebody do that? I mean, as a woman, for many of us, we see needs all around. We're like, oh, that would be so good if that we had that support or that. But a lot of us shy away from you know, stepping into that fear of unknown or stepping into fear of that huge responsibility and taking that courageous step and being brave to do it. Mm -hmm. What is it in you that says, I mean, that's two organizations you founded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's big. Plus you're a mom, plus you're on air, plus you're a wife and, and you're a friend. I mean, there's so many hats that you have. You know, what does it take as a woman to do that? And what, what motivates you? What gets you to do, you know, this incredible work that you're doing? Well, I'm, I think I'm just trying to approach them for what they are. I'm okay. not trying to create them too big, too fast. A lot of prayer. I mean, we're still looking for great people to team up with. It's still a process. I still have fear. I still wonder, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I hear stories all the time of women saying, oh, you know what? We went to the meeting in Burlington. We had one just in uh, November. And it was really amazing to be in a room where there are women who are going through the same things as I'm going through. And I think as women uh, specifically, we thrive in a, in a situation of social and mm -hmm. community. Yeah. And I kind of feel for a while we've gotten away from that. But for me, not being around friends, I start to feel drained. I, I get tired more. Um, I really get fuel from the people around me. And I want to be surrounded by people who are like-minded. And so for Wim, that's just that's what I would like, is that we can create a community and you know, encourage each other and be you know, refreshed by one another so we can go out into the world. Because it's tough. Um, 1016 Entertainment is based off of Matthew 1016 from sending out like sheep among wolves, be as innocent as doves, be as shrewd as snakes. I love the imagery mm -hmm. in that. And unless you've got support, unless you are connected with God, it's, it's tough to do that. And being out west, we don't have the same kind of community that you guys have here in Ontario. And so I want women out there to know that they can connect with women here or in the East Coast and just create a, a nationwide support group, essentially, because mm -hmm. the industry is a tough industry and it is very male dominated. And sometimes you can feel, you know, beat up in a meeting, you know, there's mansplaining happening, right? And you're like, <laughs> come on now. Yeah. I went to the same school you did. I sat right next to you. Yeah. I don't need you to talk to me like this because yeah. it happens whether you're in the mainstream industry and sadly, yes, the Christian industry, too. I know that. I think through my time in my own journey in coming to Canada and being, you know, a young woman and even being, you know, Asian and quite outspoken extrovert, there were a lot of challenges for me, you know, being able to be at the table and share. Mm -hmm. And I would say that for me, there were, yes, women that supported me, but the ones that actually helped me get to where I am today have actually been men mm -hmm. who have stepped out front and said, yeah. I am going to bring a voice here. Or I've had men back me and get in trouble for allowing me to speak at a church or have given me their um, preaching schedule and were sick. And I'm doing like air quotes if you can't see. <laughs> they were sick, so then I was able to step in the pulpit. Like it's, there were men over and over and over again who said, okay, we will be a voice. We will stand in this gap for you. And it, it, it's an amazing thing when you see that. And so, you know, women and men together yeah. are needed to help everybody's voice come to the table and, you know, be basically broadcast, um, you know, in, in the areas that are needed. We, we need both men and women, right? Absolutely. Um, We're a team, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, we have a few more minutes left, Holly, and I can't believe that that went so quickly. But some last thoughts about as a Christian woman. What are the, some of the things that help you navigate, you know, busy life, um, relationship with God, friendships? I, I think it's because, you know, there are women, you know, listening and watching going, whoa, she's just doing it. Amazing. Look at her enthusiasm and she's great. And, you know, I want to I wanna be like that. I want to have that kind of drive and passion to, to change my country, neighborhood, world. What would you say has helped you along your journey with that? What What is it about your relationship with God and just you uh, that is able to do that and do it well? 
I think it really goes back to when I was talking about being in junior high and really being able to have that um, firm um, relationship with God. We've had our ups and downs, obviously. I mean, I'm human. Yeah. Um, and just knowing that he was there for me then, and I know that he's there for me now. And then, you know, I was never going to get married or have kids because I was going to do it on my own, right? <laughs> um, but just watching him, you know, through my husband, because now I am married, and, mm-hmm. and blessing me with a husband who supports what I do. I love what you said about, you know, men kind of mm-hmm. helping you get to where you need to be, because that's just kind of the reality for a lot of, a lot of us. And having my husband's support and then seeing him with my girls is amazing because I get to see what a father-daughter relationship Mm -hmm. is supposed to be. And I get to see that, you know, when I see that, I I hear God saying, that's what I wanted for you. And that's me to you. And so just having those little moments just encourages me to keep doing what I'm doing. And I mean, if there are people who are wanting to get involved with any of these things that I'm up to. (laughs) <laughs> we're always looking for people to to join us and to be a part of what's happening and to be a part of the community in, in their various ways, whatever that whatever that looks like. Um, for WIM Canada, we've got our theme verse. It's Ephesians yeah. 2.10. Um, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Love that and that kind of like sums up mm-hmm. all of what I've been doing and what we're trying to do as, as teams with 1016 and with WIM Canada, it's just seeing a need and trying to move ahead. And I guess for my season right now of life, it's more about, oh, this is all that you were doing and being pulled away and being on that leave, kind of redefining self-worth mm-hmm. and being reminded that our worth is 100% wrapped up in God's love for us. It's nothing that we bring to the table. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that we could ever do. I could be involved with a million things, and it does not matter. God loves me for just me being me. You know, that's, and that is like a, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, for every, you know, woman, man listening, you know, that's a really powerful statement that you said. Because yes, you know, you and I are both very busy. We do things, and a lot of people look, whether Facebook, Instagram, wherever, and go, wow, look at all what you're doing. So great, so great, so great. And yet, you know, take that all away, strip that away, and God still loves us. Yeah. Which is sometimes moments, Holly, for me, even honestly, I'm like, because there is that part where it's like, I want to do great things, great things, and get this approval from God that I'm good and I'm worthy. And yeah. and when you say that, that's huge because it's like, mm, even if you didn't do that, but your heart was for me yeah, and our relationship was strong, man, I still love you, Melinda, you know, Holly, even if you didn't do that. Yeah. However... You know, it's that thing where God has gifted us and he's given us these amazing opportunities. And for, you know, I think both of us, we've had to step in and go, okay, God, (laughs) I don't know. I'm going to trust you, but I'm going to go for it. And I Mm -hmm. think that's the beauty, too, of this journey with him and with others, right, to see where he takes you when you're obedient you say yes. Yeah. Like for you, I think as soon as you said yes, you're like, whoa. Yeah. Founder, <laughs> president, founder, president, mama, wife. Yeah. Now what? <laughs> now what? You know, and, I exa- and I'm so excited because, you know, what is in store for you, you know, in the future? But I, I really want to affirm to you, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to see, you know, young women step out and say, okay, God, you know, use me to help women find a voice in, you know, music and media, because there's so many in Canada, I mean, let alone the world, Mm -hmm. but in Canada, Christian women who have so much to offer and just aren't given the platform Mm -hmm. to do it, Yeah, right? And I think, you know, WIM and and 1016 are great um, places to do that. What are the websites and how can they get in in contact with you if they want to connect with you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, It's 1016entertainment.com or wimcanada.ca, W-I-M-M, Canada. That's great. So those are two websites, and contact information is there as well. And they can just connect if they want to go to, say, a conference or a seminar that you guys do across Canada. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Everybody, everybody should be going to, well, women, (laughs) coming to conferences, checking out the website. Um, Holly, thank you so much. Holly Sackett Reed, my guest today, so inspiring. Your life is such an inspiration. We'll continue to pray for you in the work that you do because I think it's so important for our nation and and even to inspire people outside of Canada to do this kind of work. I think that many people listening and watching will be inspired and hopefully they'll start up some new initiatives for women too. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, now we're going to go out and... <laughs> And hang out when you don't have your kids with you. So I know. Some shopping. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for being on the show, Holly. Oh, thanks for having me. 
Unlock Your Story with Melinda Estabrooks. Listen for new episodes every Monday and subscribe to the podcast at faithstrongtoday.com.